Pope Francis begins chapter 3 by asserting that we must acknowledge the human origins of the ecological crisis, since a certain way of understanding human life and activity has gone awry, to the serious detriment of the world around us. He names the origins of the crisis as technology, the globalization of the technocratic paradigm, and the crisis and effects of modern anthropocentrism. Francis acknowledges with gratitude, saying that we must rejoice in the great contributions that technologies have contributed to the improvement of living conditions. But, he says, these very technologies have given us an impressive dominance over the whole of humanity and the entire world. Never has humanity had such power over itself, and nothing ensures that it will be used wisely. Pope Francis emphasizes this point by quoting Romano Guardini, Contemporary man has not been trained to use power well, because our immense technological development has not been accompanied by a development in human responsibility, values, and conscience. Francis then speaks about the second origin of the ecological crisis as the technological paradigm, which exalts the concept of a subject who, using logical and rational procedures, progressively approaches and gains control over an external object. Because human beings and material objects no longer extend a friendly hand to one another, the relationship has become confrontational. This has made it easy to accept the idea of infinite or unlimited growth. However, Francis claims, this is a false concept, since it is based on the lie that there is an infinite supply of the Earth's goods, and this leads to the planet being squeezed dry beyond every limit. This leads to environmental degradation, anxiety, a loss of the purpose of life and of community living. What is needed to move forward is a bold cultural revolution. We need to slow down and look at reality in a different way, to appropriate the positive and sustainable progress which has been made, but also to recover the values and the great goals swept away by our unrestrained delusions of grandeur. The third origin of the crisis which Francis speaks about is an excessive anthropocentrism which today, under another guise, continues to stand in the way of shared understanding and of any effort to strengthen social bonds. Francis develops his position quoting extensively from Guardini. The technological mind sees nature as an insensate order, as a cold body of facts, as a mere given, as an object of utility, as raw material to be hammered into useful shape. It views the cosmos similarly as a mere space into which objects can be thrown with complete indifference. The intrinsic dignity of the world is thus compromised. Pope Francis says that human beings no longer recognize their rightful place with respect to the world. Our understanding of what it means to have dominion over the world should be that of the Federation of Asian Bishops, who state that our dominion over the universe should be understood more properly in the sense of responsible stewardship. This skewed understanding, says Francis, will cause us to fail to acknowledge as part of reality the worth of a poor person, a human embryo, or a person with disabilities. Once the human being declares independence from reality and behaves with absolute dominion, the very foundations of our life begin to crumble. Not wanting to be misunderstood, Pope Francis asserts 
that if the present ecological crisis is one small sign of the ethical, cultural, and spiritual crisis of modernity, we cannot presume to heal our relationship with nature and the environment without healing all fundamental human relationships. Our relationship with the environment can never be isolated from our relationship with others and with God. And furthermore, since everything is interrelated, concern for the protection of nature is also incompatible with the justification of abortion. Francis continues this examination of the origins of the ecological crisis by discussing three current issues. Practical relativism, the need to protect employment, and new biological technologies. Francis addresses the practical relativism of today saying that we should not be surprised to find, in conjunction with the omnipresent technocratic paradigm and the cult of unlimited human power, the rise of relativism, which sees everything as irrelevant unless it serves one's own immediate interests. When human beings place themselves at the center, they give absolute priority to immediate convenience and all else becomes relative. The culture of relativism is the same disorder which drives one person to take advantage of another, to treat others as mere objects, imposing forced labor on them or enslaving them to pay their debts. The same kind of thinking leads to the sexual exploitation of children and abandonment of the elderly who no longer serve our interests. This same use and throw away logic generates so much waste because of the disordered desire to consume more than what is really necessary. When the culture itself is corrupt and objective truth and universally valid principles are no longer upheld, then laws can only be seen as arbitrary impositions or obstacles to be avoided. He also says that any approach to an integral ecology, which by definition does not exclude human beings, needs to take account of the value of labor. If we reflect on the proper relationship between human beings and the world around us, we see the need for a correct understanding of work. In the reality of today's global society, it is essential that we continue to prioritize the goal of access to steady employment for everyone, no matter the limited interests of business and dubious economic reasoning. Helping the poor financially must always be a provisional solution in the face of pressing needs. The broader objective should always be to allow them a dignified life through work. In order to continue providing employment, it is imperative to provide an economy which favors productive diversity and business creativity. And finally, Pope Francis says we must be careful about using our new technologies in manipulating and intervening in nature. We need constantly to rethink the goals, effects, overall context, and ethical limits of this human activity, which is a form of power involving considerable risks. Discussions are needed in which all those directly or indirectly affected, farmers, consumers, civil authorities, scientists, seed producers, people living near fumigated fields, and others can make known their problems and concerns and have access to adequate and reliable information in order to make decisions for the common good, present and future. Human costs always include economic costs, and economic dysfunctions always involve human costs. To stop investing in people in order to gain greater short-term financial gain is bad business for society.